Hi and welcome to Great Getaways. Today we're going to take you to Sand Point and the Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore where we're going to hike the Sand Point Marsh Interpretive Trail. After that we go on our final leg of the Bruno's Run Trail in the Hiawatha National Forest and then we're going to take you back a few years to one of our most incredible kayaking adventures. We are always on the lookout for a new trail, and we found one that is not only a great hike, but is located right on the point of the Pitcher Rocks National Lakeshore. Sand Point Marsh Trail is located four miles northwest of Munising in Alger County. Well, at the western end of the Pitcher Rocks National Lakeshore, right outside of Munising, uh, we've come out here to uh, just kind of take a look around see the trails that are out here and some of the other scenic views that you can find. We come out on the trail right now though, it's called the Marsh Trail. That's why all the boardwalk you see around me right now because we're going out into a marshy area. Um, good spot usually to spot some wildlife around. It's just a nice walk through here so and it's a short trail too. So we're gonna go ahead and take that and see where it takes us. This trail is a one mile loop across from Sandpoint Beach. This wheelchair accessible boardwalk takes you through beautiful wetlands. Old beach ridges, a cattail marsh, small ponds, white cedar, and black spruce is the scenic experience of this trail. Sorry animal lovers, there's no pets allowed on this trail. Hey, what, just looking off the side here, it, it looks like it's just kind of a wet area maybe out in here. Got a little swampy looking, a lot of brush though, but you don't see any water. But if you look down right next to the decking here, it's all water. You couldn't even walk out there because there's so much water. You know, the nice thing about this particular trail is it's an interpretive trail, which means it's got signs out here. Uh, tells you a little bit about the wildlife, the fauna, the flora, and just gives you an idea of what's out here, what you might see, what to look for. There are 16 points marked with interpretive signs, giving more details about the marsh's wildlife, plants, seasonal changes, and even how and when the boardwalk was constructed. According to the National Park Service, the trail leads you through a landform mosaic, which changes from relatively low and dry forested ridges to wet swales occupied by a variety of wetland plant associations. Well, apparently, uh, one of the animals out here that you could find is going to be a beaver. And this tells you a little bit about it. As a matter of fact, it's got a, a, a spot here where it shows what the print of the uh, beaver is going to look like. So kind of keep your eyes open, and you might see something like that in the mud, and you'll know the beaver's around. Also watch for the beaver huts, which usually look like a mound of uh, downed trees or uh, a lot of brush that's built up into a little hut shape. The presence of water often controls plant diversity. Here a small water course winds through the middle of the swamp. Beavers have constructed a dam at the channel outlet near the road culvert by the lake. The dam regulates the water level of this wetland much of the year. Right now we're standing in an area that's called a wilderness clearing. And it's a little bit more open area. There's a little creek that's running through here. Uh, there's some beaver, as we mentioned, in the area, and they have dammed up some of this stuff, and that's why we're, we're kind of getting these swamp areas. But the nice thing is, is there's a, a diversity of wildlife that's all around here, plant life too. And these signs will help you as you come into these areas to identify some of the things that you see. Like many northern shrub swamps, this area is dominated by moisture-dependent sedges, leather leaf, and sweet gale. There are some 500 species of sedges throughout the world, half of which grow in North America. At least five species are found in this wetland, signifying a diversity of species in a relatively small area. That's kind of a neat uh, sign here. It's uh, almost like a relief map, and you get an idea as if you've got an aerial view looking down in this particular area. I think we're out right out in here because um, our road's right about here. Doesn't actually show you that, but uh, it does give you an idea of what, uh, what the area would look like from the air. You know, we're at the end of the trail right now. Um, we came out from Munising, we started down H58, we turned off on another road, I think it's Sandpoint Road. 
is what it's called. It goes out to the uh, Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore headquarters. Um, this we found along the way. There's a place you can pull off, uh, come back here on this trail. This is a handicap accessible trail too, all the way around. You got some that's paved like this, but most of it is a, is a boardwalk that runs through the swampy area. Um, what's really crazy is right across the road where we're parked, you can see down into Munising, Munising Bay, Grand Island, Lake Superior. What more could you ask for? So before we leave, we wanted to visit an old forgotten boathouse with a link to our maritime past. It is the former Sandpoint Life Saving Station. The boathouse used by the Life Saving Service has been somewhat restored and houses an old life saving boat and equipment used by the men who were stationed there. When we visited, the doors were open and people were welcome to tour the inside and read the signs explaining all the items contained within. On the water is a beautiful beach and a view across the water to Grand Island where you can see the East Channel Lighthouse. Now is the time to revisit the finest wilderness kayak trip that we've ever taken. When we arrived at the Big Island Lake Wilderness, we were surprised to see three other vehicles in this normally vacant area. But when you think about it, three vehicles for 5,800 acres means the chances are good that you won't have to worry about seeing another person to ruin your serenity. Well, as you can probably tell, we've got a real adventure planned for you today. We're just north of Manistique in the Hiawatha National Forest at the Big Island Lake Canoe Wilderness. Uh, you start out in a little parking lot like this. We've got to go down a trail about a third of a mile to our first lake. From that lake, we'll go to another lake, go to another lake, and each one you have to transport your kayaks and your gear across, and then you go into the other areas. The campground is out here. Nice area, though. Come out here, you got to have the right gear with you. So we'll get into that a little bit as we go along. We packed each kayak with all the gear we would need for the journey and hiked the three quarters of a mile back to the first lake where we would begin our adventure. And that's not bad at all. And this should be the longest portage that we have today. A beautiful area that's out here. We've got uh, multiple lakes. I think there's around 23 lakes that are out here. We're going to be going from lake to lake. We'll probably only take in maybe three, maybe four tops just to get the feel of the area. It's been quite a few years since we've gotten out here. Yeah, to do any more, we'd have to camp. Yes. Yeah, and we're not planning on that, but we hope to uh, pull up maybe to one of the campsites, uh, take a look around, show you what they look like. So if you want to come out here and do a little wilderness camping, you can do that too. But uh, right now, we're just going to go ahead and put in. We did bring our fishing rods along. We'll see how it goes and see if we uh, string them up and get them ready. But uh, we just want to get out there and have a little bit of fun and paddle around. That would be a great escape. All right. Before heading into the water, we made sure that we were covered with insect repellent. And if you're wearing shorts, it's a good idea to wear high socks because the trails are full of everything from poison ivy to picker bushes. The 23 small lakes located here range in size from 5 to 149 acres. Some of the lakes are connected by maintained portages, while other of the lakes are remote making access more challenging, as you will soon see. We're out here on our first lake. This is called Big Island Lake, the namesake of the area. Uh, right behind the camera right now, there's a huge uh, island that's out here. And then on the other side of that, there's another smaller one. We're going to paddle on through this. Our next lake is going to be Mid Lake. And uh, once we're on that, we're either going to go south and go into another lake, or we'll go to the east which there's also a portage there for a, a, a lake that goes out that way. We're going to wait till we get over there to find out for sure just which way we want to go. But uh, this gives you an idea. You get out here, this, you're just out in the wilderness. It's so quiet out here, so beautiful. And I'm going to run into you just a little bit there. <laughs> but it's just a, a great area to be out in. You, nobody around, although there are other people out here. We did have cars in the parking lot. And uh, we'll probably see some campers maybe out here while we're out here. So. We're going to go ahead and get going. As a matter of fact, I see a, a canoe way at the other end of the lake right there. So there are other people out here, but uh, I don't expect to see too many. So we'll get going here. We're going to head down the south end of this lake. Currently, there are no permits required for camping or day use in the Big Island Lake wilderness. Camping at designated campsites is allowed and encouraged. Camping and day use opportunities include off-trail hiking, flat water canoeing, and fishing. 
Several portage trails lead into the Wilderness Lake where fishing and canoeing opportunities exist. Some lakes have no trails leading to them though, so most hiking is cross country and requires strong orienteering skills. Well, we're at the, our first portage. Uh, once we've got onto the lake, we're going over to Mid Lake from here. Nice thing about this, it's just a quick portage over. It's only uh, about 100 feet from one lake to the other, so should be fairly easy to do. White birch, maple, and aspen cover the wooded hills that surround the lakes. Berries, mushrooms, and wildflowers grow throughout the region and a wide range of wildlife and waterfowl, including sensitive species, may be observed but should not be disturbed. Just about plan on getting a little wet at each portage because uh, it is quite shallow by the shoreline and you need to get in and, but you have to get them floating first, so. Probably one of the first thing I noticed was that there's, there's really no other sounds than maybe the wind in the trees, some frogs, a few birds, and my paddle in the water. Other than that, there's no road noises. We're way back in the National Forest. Closest road is a gravel two track that comes back here to, uh, to the, the trailheads. And uh, we've gone back now, we've made one portage, we're in the second lake, uh, headed into a third. We're going to look at this portage. From what I understand, it's short but steep. I don't know what that means, but we're going to find out. If it isn't too bad, we'll haul our equipment over and try and try into the next lake. Otherwise, we may go back to the other end. There's another portage that leads uh, into another lake that'll be easier. Well, they were right. It's short and steep. <laughs> uh, when we brought the canoes in, or the kayaks in the first time, we actually carried them down uh, by themselves. We carried our equipment separately. Now we've got everything packed in these, and I think we, if we're going to do this, we'd like to try to keep everything right in the kayaks. But I'll let Denny get out and decide whether you want to try to make this or not. The decision was made to portage up over the top of this hill. They were definitely right about the steep part, but it was a long way from short. We hauled each kayak to the top one at a time. Loaded with gear, they weighed about 120 pounds apiece. Once at the top, we took a quick break. We were almost to the easy part, going down, or so we thought. Yeah, this one is definitely steep. Well, when they said steep, they weren't kidding. This one is definitely steep coming up these hills. They have uh, built some uh, wood platforms so you can step on them as you go along. That's how steep it is. You get up the top, it's a little bit further ahead here, and then it drops down the other side. The, it doesn't look like it drops quite as far, so coming back, we at least get to go down this part instead of up it. But uh, be prepared if you come this way to uh, have to lift uh, quite a bit of stuff uh, through the portage. You ready to get this thing done? <laughs> Me neither, but we got no choice. We're only halfway. <laughs> before you are out in the wilderness here and as you can see it's not unusual to find things that are blocking the trails it can be a rough experience coming through you got to plan for this and and assume that uh, there's going to be times it gets pretty hard but you keep on going and you're going to come to what we came to now and uh, I think you'll change your mind about what it's like coming out here we have got out three lakes um, but the portage coming to this lake was was a lot rougher that's the one where we went up and down the hill and that was a lot rougher than what we figured, and we know we have to go back that way. Uh, it's been beautiful coming out here. This is a great place if you can come out for the day or come out and do your wilderness camping out here. And virtually the most busy time of the year is where we're at right now, and, and we've just seen, we have seen a few people, but not many. Uh, there's only, like on this lake, we're, at, we're at one of the campsites right now. 
Uh, this is the only one on this lake. The lake we came through before this is only one. The one before that, which is one of the largest lakes. Now the lakes out here run between 150 acres for the largest down to about five acres. How far did you get? Right there. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we're at our last lake to lake portage right here. We're gonna go across now back to Big Island Lake. Um, and this is really the shortest portage, although it, uh, it may very well be one of the wetter ones. It's so shallow that you gotta get out and pull your kayak along here. One of the neat things about this portage is when you come in and you can see the kayak down there, you walk up a hill, it flattens out, and goes right into the next lake. So the, this lake level is higher than that one, and yet they're only a short distance apart. Bruno's Run is a multi-use trail used by hikers, bikers, and trail runners. The west side section of the trail where we are today is hilly and very scenic. The trail passes closely by multiple lakes and a section of the Indian River along this 3.5 mile portion of the trail. It has some muddy sections, but nothing extreme. Here today we're going to do another leg of Bruno's Run Trail. Now on this trip we came up 13 and we stopped at the Indian River. The pathway runs a little right along here. We're going to be heading back east. We're going to try to get back to Wedge Lake. Um, if you were to follow it the other way, you're going to follow it up river uh, across 13. You'll get up to Whitewater's campground and then beyond that Moccasin Lake and then it'll turn back for a big loop that comes back around to where we started. The peace and tranquility is never broken on this trail because there's no cell phone service. How perfect. The many lakes and streams in the area as well as a variety of trees and other plants make it likely that those traveling the trail will spot wildlife or tracks. If you are alert, you are sure to have an enjoyable outing. Hey Stuart, see we're out here along the Indian River still. Steep bank going down to it, thick woods. Not something you'd want to climb down to. It sure looks interesting to fish. see we got a little bit of a road here in front of us uh, I don't know where it goes to but uh, what would happen is we came from uh, 13 followed down along the Indian River then we got a switchback that brought us back up over a hill into this spot here which now leads back into the woods so you on this part of the trail you will cross roads um, there are cross-country ski trails out here besides this main trail so don't get lost. Stay with uh, the Bruno's Run Trail when you come around here. Of course, I forgot the map, but... <laughs> if you like rustic camping, you're in luck. There are no permits required. But remember what Smokey the Bear always says, only you can prevent forest fires. Well, you never know what you're gonna find as you go down the trail. Now, we were coming down, and we looked up to the tree, and there's a bald eagle. So, we kind of slowed down a little bit, and I've been trying to take pictures as I go along, just kind of creeping along the trail. All of a sudden, he takes off, or she, and the next thing you know, he goes across a little bit, he lands in another tree. Here comes another eagle, coming down, sitting in the tree with them together, and, uh, we sat there again, creeping along, trying to get some shots of them. Eventually they took off into the air, crossed again, and then finally out of sight. But those are the kind of things you find out here. You see how beautiful it is, how dense it is in some places, a little more open than others. But man, this is, I, this is really turning into one of my favorite trails, everything I found about it. I like going through the hills and the thick woods where it's at and long rivers and lakes. You can't beat this stuff. You might want to give it a try. The trail is considered easy to moderate for most mountain bikers and suitable for beginners in most sections. 
The trail is modest in elevation with only a few small climbs and descents along the rail. The trail flows well and can be ridden in either direction. You bike these trails a lot? Yeah, once a month or so. Okay, what do you think of them? They're awesome. Um, it's a nice 10 mile loop that uh, is very well maintained and it's interesting different types of forest you ride through by the lake. There's a lot of hills out here. Yeah. Uh, does it get difficult for you? You evidently do a lot of biking. Well, most of the trail is uh, switchback so that the hills are um, uh, relatively easy. Okay. It okay. used to be that when the trail, before it was made into a mountain bike trail, most of the trail went right up, straight up the hills, and there are a lot more ruts than there are now. Okay. It's a very well maintained trail now. Well, thank you for stopping with us, and if you're into the, the biking, it, it, I see you got kind of, in, I guess you call it a fat tire. Yeah, it's a three and a half inch tire. Okay. Yep. Now, Fatty. that's what you usually use, use out here because of the trail, or just? Uh, it's just the bike I chose today. Oh, you got several? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Why didn't that surprise me, right? Well, hey, thank you for yeah, talking to no us. Problem. We appreciate right. it. Bicyclists should maintain control of their speed at all times and approach turns in anticipation of someone around the bend. Plus, as you may have seen, there are many encounters with limbs or trees across the trail. By the way, this trail is not open to e-bikes. But you might remember the person we were talking to that was on the mountain bike mentioned how well these trails are maintained. And as you walk along, you're going to find trees down all over the place. They fall every year. Forest Service has to come out here, clean these trails up. They're doing an excellent job. This has been one great trail to be on. It's one of the best. Well, this is something you're going to see along the trail quite a bit. And what it is, is just a tree that's went down. I don't know if it was the wind or maybe lightning that hit it. And, uh, but you want to be aware of it out there. If you're good in a windy day or in a storm, just keep your eyes and ears open. I know that when something like this happens, and you can see the little pieces off here, these things break. They're like a shotgun going off in the woods as they go down. So it's uh, interesting, but I hope you're not under one. I'm seeing these little white things down here. I just wanted to go down and take a look. Kind of swampy down in here. Oh. <laughs> okay. You know, I don't know exactly what they are, but it, uh, it was probably a flower and now it's just falls getting to it and it's just kind of turns into what looks like, uh, what a dandelion kind of looks like after it turns and dies. And that's what all these out here seem to seem to be. Oh, oh, jeez. Oh, you're gonna love this. I'll tell you what, I live up for two reasons. One, we've got a beautiful site out here. We've got a little pond that sits out here. But we also have a bench. This is the first bench I've seen out on this trail. To be honest with you, I'm looking forward to sitting down for a minute. Come on up. with coming out to an area like this and having this beautiful overlook and having a bench set here is sometimes you spend just a little bit more time sitting than you should be. So we've decided we're kind of enjoying this. We're going to spend the rest of our time here. We're going to end it for today. I hope you've enjoyed this trip out here into the Hiawatha National Forest along the Bruno's Run Trail. If you get the opportunity, make sure you get up here and do it. Mm -hmm.